Proverbs 31. And y'all know the proverbial woman, so I'm going to just read the verse that God is going to have me expound on today. Amen. She makes, verse 18, she makes sure her dealings are profitable. Her lamp burns late into the night. I want to preach to you for just a few moments from the subject, have you checked your oil lately? All right. All right. Have you checked your oil the description of this virtuous woman, real briefly, mm-hmm. came from the heart of a mother mm-hmm. who was trying to provide her son with the characteristics of a good wife. Some think this mother was Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, and that Lemuel was an affectionate name given to him by her as a child, and it means belonging to God. In this passage of scripture, she describes a powerful, ambitious woman, one who loves her husband, is devoted to him, takes care of him and their family. Mm -hmm. She doesn't mind helping the sick. She loves the Lord, etc. And as I sat reading these scriptures and looking at the list of duties upon her daily plate, I found that we had a lot of things in common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And had this virtuous woman been able to manifest into my presence during my study of her, I would have asked her a lot of questions. Knowing me, I would have probably said something like this. I would have said, now virtue. (laughs) Can we talk just woman to woman? Mom to mom. I mean, lay down our halos kind of talk. Let's, Let's just talk for a few moments. Uh, Virtue, in verse 28 of your profile, it says, your children are constantly calling you all the time, too. (laughs) Your profile says you have responsibilities as a wife just like I do, and your husband is always calling you, too. (laughs) Well, (laughs) yeah. You try to be a good helpmate because... You want him to shine within your community and be the best that he can be. You you try to keep your house clean and neat and and take care of your family when they're sick. I see that you sew and and make your clothes too, just like I do. I I may not go out and and search for wool and and flax to make my fabric like you do, but but nowadays, girl, we can go to a place called Joanne's Fabric or or, or Walmart and and buy it right off the shelf. That's all right. Uh, We both provide meals for our families. Uh, No, I don't have a garden or or go and import foods like you do, but I do shop at a store called Food Line. (laughs) We both are known as strong women. We we both look for good merchandise. I've even started couponing to make sure I'm in store. (laughs) And I see your lamp burns into the night just like mine. You know, when we give of ourselves at church, minister to the lost, visit and pray for the sick and shut in, we both try to speak wisdom and be kind to folk. And of course, after everything else we do, there's no time for laziness. And last but not least, we both love the Lord. But virtue, I got to ask you a question. Has there ever been a time 
in your life when you just felt like running away for a little while? Well, mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like going to an isolated island where nobody knows your name? Talk about that thing. As a wife, as a mother, as a woman in general, have you ever had a day where you felt like you could cry at any moment? And you felt full and weighed down but didn't know why? Has there ever been a day where all of a sudden, out of the blue, you say to yourself, if one more person calls my name, I'm going to scream? Because virtue, I, I'm going to be transparent on this beautiful Mother's Day in 2014 and admit that I've been there. I felt like changing my name to something unpronounceable. <laughs> I felt like letting my name be a sign like Prince the Musician did so nobody could call me. I felt like shutting myself off in a room, locking the door, and throwing away the key. Because it seemed like I was being pulled this way and pulled that way. And my children were calling me. My husband was calling me. The phone was ringing and all I heard was, Ma, Lisa, ring, ring, ring. Ma, Lisa, ring, ring. <laughs> But one of them, guess which one it was, followed me around the house trying to pronounce what I just gave them. And yes, I had to repent. But do you hear me, virtue? As a wife, as a mother, have you ever experienced this? Please tell me yes. You begin to pray and ask the Lord, what is wrong with me? You can't understand why everything and everybody is getting on your last nerve. You can't understand why the phone ringing gets on your nerves. The calls of your children and husband bother you. You can't shake the heaviness. To, you might even feel like giving up. And tears sometimes begin to flow because you don't know why you're acting and feeling the way you are. When people ask you what's wrong, you say nothing. Because you can't explain what's going on inside of you. And because you can't explain what's wrong with you, you might even begin to anoint yourself with oil trying to cast out stuff. That's right. That's what we have. Do you hear me, Virtue? Yeah. Can you relate to what I'm saying to you, Virtue? Well, one day years ago, as I was experiencing one of these episodes, I just went to the gas station. And when I got out of my car, I looked up and saw a sign posted on the connecting gas pump. The sign was written in the form of a question. And it asked the question, have you checked your oil lately? <laughs> Since I was standing at a gas station pumping gas, the first oil I thought about was the oil in my car. Because I've learned over the years that oil is a necessity, which plays a very important role in the longevity of your motor. You should check it periodically to make sure it hasn't dropped below the full mark. And if you're driving the car more than normal, it's going to require more oil than normal. Yes. And every car motor has an oil stick, so you can determine how much oil you have left. Okay. It will read full, half full, or empty. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Never let it drop to the half full mark, because before you know it, it will be near the empty mark. Mm -hmm. And if you're still pushing your motor without ever replenishing the oil, the motor will lock up shut down and have you stranded. Some car engines will give you a warning 
that your engine is about to shut down mm -hmm. by making knocking noises, stalling, and spitting out smoke. But some won't give you much warning at all. Sure. They'll just quietly lock up, shut down, and refuse to move. And you'll find yourself needing to thumb a ride off of somebody else. Mm -hmm. But I glance at the sign again. Have you checked your oil lately? And it hit me that God was trying to tell me something. Mm -hmm. He was trying to tell me that the reason I had been feeling the way I had been feeling was because my spiritual engine had been putting out more than normal uh -huh. and it was knocking and spitting out stress irritability, <laughs> impatience, <laughs> trying to let me know that I need to check my oil. All right. All right. Go ahead and work it. Work. My spiritual oil was low. Yes. Moms, do you hear me today? Yes. 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 And I knew exactly what the Holy Spirit was talking about yes. because countless number of times he used me to give this same wisdom to others. Mm -hmm. But now it was time for me to hear and apply that very to my own life. Mm -hmm. I had to remind myself that the way I was feeling didn't mean I was a bad mom mm -hmm. That's right. or a bad wife That's right. or a bad Christian. It didn't mean I couldn't be classified as a virtuous woman anymore or that I wasn't faithful. Ladies, we must understand that because we have so much on our plates mm -hmm. on a daily basis, yes. A spiritual tune-up is a necessity. We are made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And each one of them has an appetite. The flesh eats food. The soul has a tendency to eat the things of the world because that's where our mind, will, and emotions are. And the spirit eats the word of God. And in order for our spiritual engine to purr like a kitten, and run smoothly, we have to check our oil daily. Yes, yes. The enemy loves it when you allow your oil to get low yes. because that's when he throws unexpected trash that's in right. front of you uh -huh. on this spiritual highway just to irritate you and frustrate you even more. Right. That's when he places spiritual road rage behind you <laughs> and beside you yes. because he's trying to drive you over the edge. Yes. So you a question. Have you checked your oil lately? Uh, right now. Come on. Is your oil stick registering full, <laughs> half full, or near empty? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. There are two verses, and I'm, I'm up almost through. There are two verses within the virtuous woman description that I believe are often overlooked, and verse 14 is one of them. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. I believe virtue would look at us moms and shake her head and say, do you honestly think I could successfully do all that I do if I didn't steal away sometimes? Amen. I strategically on purpose go away to buy food so I can have a little peace and quiet. Go ahead, come on. Come on. I steal away so I can have a little talk with Jesus. I purposely get Amen. Just me and the Lord yes. so I can clearly hear his direction for my life. Yes. You see, while I'm getting my physical food for my family, I'm also getting my spiritual food for myself. Yes. I use that time to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God and abide under the shadow of the Almighty because I've come to understand that he is my refuge. Yes. He is my fortress. Yes. He is my God that I can trust. And then I believe she directs our attention to verse 18, where it says her lamp does not go out by night. Mm, that's right. Mm, mm, and she mm. turned to us and asked us the question, do you know why my lamp never goes out? Mm -hmm. mm, 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 mm. It's because I keep a close check on my oil. All right. All right. All right. Come on. With all I have to do, I can't afford to let my oil run out. That's right. That's right. How would I see where I'm going? Mm. How would I know what to do yes. if my lamp went out? So I make it a daily habit to check my oil. Yes. Because I've learned that if you keep it full, you don't have to worry about sudden burnout. Mm. 
There you go, there you go. And my sisters, you know this already, but God said to remind you again, you just can't put a quart of oil in on Sunday. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. And another quart in at Bible study. Bye -bye. <laughs> or woman to woman. And expect your spiritual engine to run smoothly every day of the week. You need to check your oil daily. And if I be honest, sometimes you have to check it throughout the day. So if your oil stick is registering low today, pull over and get a tool. <laughs> No, we just can't use any old kind of oil either. No, that's right. Okay. That's right. No, we have to use what the manufacturer recommends. Because uh, right. you know when a car, a book comes with a car. A book comes with a car. It tells you what kind of oil to use. And Pastor Steve was schooling me on the different types of oil that a car uses. And so the type of engine we have, mobile oil, isn't good enough. <laughs> and how <laughs> line just won't do. Yes. Well, the pencil can't pass the test. Through. <laughs> we need supernatural right, oil. Right. All, right. Right. all made for our spiritual engine. Yes. All that's health to our flesh, strength to our bones, Jesus. all that helps us be better moms and yeah. better wives. Yeah. And just in case you need to pick some oil up after you leave the church today on this beautiful <laughs> Mother's Day, you need to get some heavyweight oil. That's what I have to do. Than it normally does. Mm -hmm. And you're not gassed up. Mm -hmm. 